Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. I am headed down the road again as I often do. This time though, I'm not out on a pick or an adventure, although I just came from one. Sadly, it was fruitless. Went all the way to a whole different town. Everything was well above retail. I don't hold it against the person that was trying to sell the stuff. They just want to get their best dollar, but you can't have a business and pay more than what you can sell the stuff for yourself. Um, so didn't get anything, sadly. But I'm hoping that my luck turns around here and I'm off to Josh's house. It's actually my first time out at his place. He's been to my place lots, just saying. <laughs> but I haven't been out to his, I uh, went out to his old location, his old shop. It's my first time visiting his new shop. So we're gonna do a shop tour and uh, see how he's progressing on making the shelves for the store. The last episode we did, part one of this, uh, we started ripping the store apart, getting things ready. Um, and hopefully by the end of this episode, um, we'll have some shelves up and I'll have some product on those shelves. So next stop, Josh's house. Okay, after getting myself somewhat lost, I think I'm here. And if I'm not here, somebody has a truck exactly like Josh's. Pretty sure I'm here. I hear movement. Hello, hello. Oh, hey, look. Hey. I found you at your own house. <laughs> this is really nice in here. You like it? This is a swanky studio. I like it because it's you. And uh, I like it because there's stuff that I remember. <laughs> oh yeah, that's from you. Yeah, I pulled that, you know that place, the irony here is that you're rebuilding all these shelves, but the place that had the original shelves that we pulled out, uh -huh. that's the day that I got that. Oh yeah, it Yeah, is. with Patrick. Yeah. So here you go. Little did I know that the day I bought the giant Archie head, wah, it, you know, that you would later be building replicas of the shelves I got that day too. Uh, and you have been busy. Did you ever figure out what these are officially called? They like I don't know. Call them right. There's probably a word. I'm not a real woodworker. Well, those are three quarter lattice tendons. <laughs> They've got some official. Somebody who's a carpenter watching right now is like, you bunch of chuckleheads. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you've got some going. Um, that what are the big ones for? Is that something different? That's going to be for the L. So this is going to be one side. If you can imagine this beside the door, right in the corner. And then these, which are a little bit taller, are going to be mated like this, right? All the way down. Oh, I see. Right? So these will just be wider. I had to do that because of that bulkhead on the ceiling. Gotcha, there. okay. And I thought this would just look a lot cleaner. Okay, smoother. yeah. That's your transition. Cool. You got the lumber okay? Yeah, it was just mad expensive because of the lumber shortage. I know it used to be like you get a uh, two by four for like a dollar. A two by four used to be three dollars per stick. Well, back in my day. Now it's six dollars. Oh, wow. I've just gone way up. Yeah. This is what I'm worried about. That the contract. These used to be a dollar thirty a stick. Now they're three something. Mm. That's, start, that's doubling up on what it should be. That mm -hmm. I'm really worried with my construction costs on the on the new build. I'm actually concerned. Yeah, it's probably gonna be high. Yeah, I'm worried I, oh well. I guess I'll cross that road when I get there. But why don't you give me the tour of your shop? Okay, well, this is the main w woodworking area. Most of these tools actually don't belong to me. I have a shop mate now, his name is Clint. And uh, I needed a new table saw and I had to try to convince him for a long time to move his, store his stuff here right. while he found a new shop because his shop had flooding issues. And then we just decided why not move in together. So all of these tools, these big tools that I can't afford all came from his. Does he area. even live in the area? Yeah, he lives in, yeah. just it's not too the, far? Yeah, just in the town. Oh, okay. Down the road there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it would be like if he lives like 40 minutes away, I'm like, that's a pretty bad deal for him. But no, you know, he's really, he's 10 minutes away. Oh, that's awesome then. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you've got this great space. It looks like you've been welding and working on something. 
Oh yeah, is that's it? a piece. I'm actually gonna make a, another one. This was a commission piece, but uh, it's beautiful. Bonsai she, spoons. Yeah, spoons. Yeah, she didn't. She she wanted it to be made out of uh, uh, with needles instead of leaves, and I didn't. I didn't realize that. So I'm gonna actually make a second one. Oh, you'd be able to sell this, no problem. Oh, I already have. Yeah. Oh, have you? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I like how you had the vines kind of coming down the the log there yeah, too. The roots. Yeah, this is a cool piece. I actually, I actually really like it. Yeah. No, it's nice. It's really nice. So I guess every time I find old spoons and stuff, I have to send them your way. Yeah, that's exactly why I want them. Yeah, okay. Well, well to make stuff like this and whatever else. And you've got your posters up. That one's yeah. almost camouflaged. Yeah, it is, eh? Yeah. Yeah, so this area is actually Clint's area. I gave him an area because he's also a, a, a maker. He made like this cool little gun. He's almost done it. This is from the Mandalorian. Okay. Right? <laughs> cool. So it's he's kind of neat. Yeah, he's 12. So I gave him a little space here and he wanted a comic book background. So we did that. Neat. I like yeah. all the comics going on back there. Yeah. So, and you've, oh, this, I saw you making the organized tool wall. One of the hammers you got for me. Was it this one? Oh yeah, this one came from Madam Rax. Yep. And this one here came from Mary's. Which is kind of cool. Oh yeah, look, it has the MB from Mary Borgstrom right on it. Yeah. Well, probably uh, Marcus Borgstrom, her husband. Or, well, whoever's, yeah. yeah. And then this anvil, this is what you gave me as a partial trade for the last shelf that I made. Here. And you're using it? Uh, I don't I don't use it too much because I don't have a forge, but oh, yeah. I will soon. Well, it's all set up, ready to go. Yeah, I'll probably put it in, in this area right here. But right now, this is just a little putting green <laughs> that, that I have set up. Oh, I heard, yeah. I, I saw that, that you drilled the hole in your floor. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to try it. Yeah, uh, I don't know how good I'm going to be at it. I'll give it a go. <laughs> I'm not good at it either. Because then you have to accommodate for the cracks and the slope. That's exactly it. I made it, I made it hard on purpose. Like, you, you have to be skillful. Okay, I'm going to watch you. Oh, I'll probably miss. Well, you got a better shot at getting it in than I do. Okay, let's... Yeah, I do it every I'm, day. I'm going to back up and see how close you can get it. Oh... Oh, I'm going to miss, he says. <laughs> I have to say that just in case I missed. <laughs> yeah, that was for the people watching at home. That was the first try. No edits, no cuts. Oh, you're a golf pro now, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and you're filming yourself doing stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's Pickle Rick in the corner. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when people come over from your channel to watch my channel, they're like, hey, what's Pickle Rick doing there? But, yeah, this wall here was one of the first things I did. Uh... I, I figured I wanted that deep bench because I, I have my miter station here and I wanted to be able to move tools back in case I have really long stock here. And since it's such a, a deep bench, I can't really use it for tool storage. So I was like, why not make it a kind of a feature wall of, of art? See, I, I would love, I would kill to have a garage or a shop this size that I could work on cars yeah. and stuff in. I just, I can barely open my car doors in my garage yeah, right now. Yeah, I know. But it, you did, you did outfit your garage pretty cool. Well, my garage is like the inside of a house with wainscoting and stuff. It's, yeah, you it's know, nice though. it's like Mr. Peanuts garage, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, but yeah, I yeah. would love to have this kind of space. It's fun. It's heated too, right? Yeah, it is. I oh yeah, I see. Today, oh, it's warm. oh, that's the same type of heater I have, resin. Yeah, They're good. Really good. Yeah. yeah but, that small unit is more than enough for this big space here they should in fact give you sponsorship dollars for you saying that i would not oppose that <laughs> <laughs> over here i have well i can't really see i have this big safe here this safe is actually going to it's a commission piece i'm going to turn into a liquor cabinet for them oh okay uh, just waiting on some details and whatnot how did you move it oh luckily i didn't have to this used to be a garage door here yeah now it's just this is my uh i built it out a little bit to take up all the concrete space here but that's just my lathe station yeah now. but how are you gonna get this thing but, out of here oh it's on wheels so it yeah, can roll well, sideways barely and i still have that door there these so, things are horrible to move yeah when they dropped it off dude they had it laying on its back and then we like just uh, it took three of us and then i just put it here and I, it hasn't moved much what does it say on the front for toronto <laughs> The, I mean, these safes are really cool, and I come across people wanting to sell these every so often, but I, I appreciate having a back that somewhat works. You're a braver <laughs> man than I, but you said at least you didn't have to move it. No, I didn't have to move it, and they're going to pick it up, too. I'm not... Yeah. It, they're it, beautiful things. It, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, they're really nice, and I'm going to keep as much character as I can. But you uh, could almost make a safe out of wood. Like, it wouldn't take much effort to make something that looks like that out of wood. 
Yeah, but I think they just like the idea of that. Having, it's an actual antique yeah. safe. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to move it into their house, but that'll be cool. It'll be there forever, yeah. probably. It's a cool idea, though. Yeah, I guess we'll have to see how it turns out. Yeah. Oh, over there, I forgot to show you. This over here is my welding station. Oh, cool. So it's, it's a mess because I spend a lot of time here. Um, like, I make a bunch of these different... I like that because it's it's like a prickly heart, you know, like a heart is uh, it's a fragile web of pain if you land on it wrong. <laughs> it's all out of nails. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So a bunch of stuff is done on this bench that uh, that I, uh, I I like doing. I like doing this type of art. Railway tracks are really good for uh, hammering stuff on. Aren't yeah, they? for cold forging. Yeah. yeah, it's good steel. Yeah. Oh, there's your. There's actually a, someone made a. An anvil. Oh yeah. A piece of metal out of a, uh, out of some railroad. You didn't find a spot for the moose skull yet, though. Uh, why don't we go look there now? Actually, first let's look here. So this is known as the art trunk. It's a little messy. Okay. And over the summer, I'm gonna actually build an actual. Oh, cool. Lean to off of it, but this is where I keep all my art supplies. Hey, well, that's handy. So people are always uh, wondering, like, why do you keep all this stuff? Oh, yeah, I... Why do you carry or pick all this stuff? And where do you put it? Well, I put it in here, and eventually it'll turn into something. So it's always changing. This is like the... Um, it's recycling at its best, right? You're taking all this stuff that we found that was junk. And a lot of times people just give you this stuff for free too, right? Well, that's the goal, right? And then I can turn it into art or even functional piece. In fact... I have like a bunch of rebar and other round stock here, and we're actually making a gate out of rebar, which I have just over here. I'll show you that in a second. Oh, but, that's why everybody's saying you should get Josh to make your gate for the front of the store. Oh, that could be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, if I didn't have the rebar, we wouldn't have thought to use it to make this gate. Oh, cool. And the gate is actually, it's pretty cool. One of this. It's just over here. And then, and then we'll go over to that side of the shop, I suppose. Sure. So this gate, I don't know how well it'll show up, but uh, this is not done. Uh, I ran out of ball bearings to make the grapes, but this is going to go into a basement pub. Uh, they're outfitting their whole basement to be basically a, a, a pub, and it's pretty going to be pretty high end. And so this will be all, it'll look a lot better in the end, but I ran out of ball bearings, so I just have it. To so the you're going to hang a bunch now. of grapes off it too? What's that? Are they into wine, are they? Or? Yeah, yeah. This is actually going in the... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I said pub, but there's also going to be a wine cellar. Cool. A whole room. It's actually pretty cool. It'll hold a couple hundred bottles. That sounds awesome. Yeah. It's going to be a fun project. Oh, yeah. Do you like my, my tape rack? Huh. <laughs> right by the garbage. Do you use it as a garbage can, too? I use it for my bottle and can recycle. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, and this is going to become a... a not a mantle, but... Uh, it's just going to be a ledge thing in the a basement. I really like a uh, big beam rough cut lumber. Where'd you find a beam that big? I They actually have been sitting in the, on this property for about 30 years. I have a whole bunch of them. Do you? Yeah. Okay, keep, I might need you. I might need your help with All some right. stuff. I got a, I got a plan okay. for later. Cool. But we'll neat. have to bring them in so that they can, because they're going to be soaking wet, right? It's hemlock though, so they don't rot. Well, they rot eventually, but slowly. So how many of these things do you have to build? I've, th these are all the uppers, so those are all done. Yeah. Uh, now For... I've just started doing the uh, the lower part now, and uh, basically uh, these are going to sit on top of the two lowers that I that I build. Okay. And the lowers are going to be built out of two by four, just to you know, so they're stronger. And then these will just sit on top, anchor to the wall, and uh, it'll be just like your other ones. Nice. I, I am excited. I didn't even explain to Sean why half of our store was missing. <laughs> he's like, what the heck? He didn't even ask, though, either. <laughs> we, but I guess he's all right with that. Uh, cool, yeah. And you've got another workshop happening over here. So over here. This is Clint's area and also wood stores. This is the oh, ass kicker wall. Oh, these are all your... Um, all the patrons. All the patrons. So thank you to all those folks. Probably a lot of them watch you as well. That's funny. You know, I Bob the Bottle Man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't... Matthew Fox, the best moderator. Yes. Oh, I see you gave him like... Was that him? For the moment? Yeah, him and, uh, and this other person. Like, it's cool, the, the secondary community of people that become friends from watching our videos but yeah those two folks they're uh they're, yeah, they wanted it to be them sword fighting so back here this is his luther area all of his yeah his luthier 
Yeah, I see areas. he's got his forms for guitars and yeah, all sorts of different things, and then wood storage as well. So that's his wood storage. When you use these hardwoods, a lot of us, uh, I wouldn't call myself a woodworker, but a lot of us who use hardwoods and stuff and work with wood, will keep even the smallest pieces because they, they become precious because they cost a lot. Mm -hmm. But this is my wood storage here. And uh, it's kind of messed up, but like there's so, like, there's so much cool wood here. Like, so this piece here, most people wouldn't think twice. They'd probably just burn that or chuck it yeah. out, right? But what makes this special is this came from a gold mine that has been shut down for 200 years now. So one of my brothers, uh, he's a gold miner, he pulled this out of a, out of a mine where he was mining. So you can see all the old mine shafts. So you're just going to leave it just the way it is? Well, I'll clean it up a bit and I'll turn it into something. I actually have quite a bit of this. It's, but It's pretty spunky. It's pretty rotted though, but... Well, once it's cleaned up, you it'll look good. You'll be. Able have, to, I have faith in you. It'll look great. I love. I love the challenge of working with like crap materials because it it adds a, a bit of a story to the piece and right. also a challenge to make something to make something awesome. This right looks here, like a little lounge in here almost. Yeah, this is the clean area. The clean area. This is where I paint pictures and. Uh, yeah, these are some of Clint's guitars that he's working on. Okay. Currently, some of his projects. So does he do the finish work on that too? Uh, this one here is not one of his. Okay. This yeah. is one that he rescued from the trash. Oh, so he's restoring it. Yeah, but a lot of these are. You see all the water damage and yeah. stuff. Yeah. That's from his old shop being all. Oh. Yeah, that's why he moved, had to move, and I'm glad to have them. So. That is one heck of a skateboard, there, Josh. <laughs> yeah, I made this man. So you see how it has these cutouts? Yeah. When I first got this, or when I first made it, um, you see how deep that yeah. curvature is? I was going down and I I turned and I got major wheel bite and I was cruising as fast as I could. Turned and I just went flying because there was like instant brakes. So this I just use as a creeper to get under my car and stuff. A better skateboard that I've made is, is this one. This one's actually pretty nice. Well, I mean, plywood. Did you uh, give it a bit of a curve too? Oh yeah, yeah. It's concave here. Do you uh, have a form for that, or do you just kind of? I made a form for it, and this is several laminations of of uh, thin plywood. There. I also made this one. A little bit of dark humor going on up there with your broken skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to uh, paint on retired decks. I I want to have them go all the way across. Oh yeah. Um, but for now, this is what I have left because they, they sell every once in a while. I don't advertise them to sell, but people, when they see them, they sometimes want them. So then I take them down. Oh, there's your Archie collection. Oh, and there's the moose skull I gave you. Now somebody gave that to me. It's legal to own, but you can't actually buy and sell a moose skull because it's, they're not something that you typically would. Right. Hunt. No, no game animals, no predators, no eagles. No nope. raptors of any sort. You but didn't if, have any feathers or nothing. But if you find one of these in the wild, like like this was in somebody's house and they gave it to me, I can gift it to you. And so I did. Yeah. Uh, and it looks pretty cool. It's going to fit in around here for sure. I don't think you had a moose skull, did you? I didn't have a moose skull, but I have a bunch of other ones. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you have a big bison above your head. <laughs> oh, yeah. I made this out of uh, paper lunch bags. Oh, cool. That's super neat. <laughs> Uh, well, sweet. It looks good. I guess I should let you get back to doing what you got to do. Next time I see these shelves, we'll be getting, uh, put in place over at the old store. Did you find wood stain though? That was kind of right. Uh, I'm or just going to guess. Close enough. Yeah. Cause I have no, I don't remember. And since we didn't keep the can or write it down, I have a good guess. If it's not perfect, they're not going to be touching each other. And your original shelves are both different colors. Yeah, too, so. it, they're just close. If it's in the range, I think we'll be safe. As long as they're not hot pink or something, nobody is going to notice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm going to let you get back to work. Thanks for having me out at your shop. So uh, next time I turn this camera back on is going to be for us in the store installing these things, which will be exciting. Perfect. All right, we'll see you back at the shop. All right. While Josh is busy working away, um, Stephen and I are going to work on getting the guitars down, making room for those shelves to go in tomorrow morning. 
uh, and redecorating some of the rooms. Now I do have a plan and that plan is this. The plan is that I'm going to take all of the guitars and all of that stuff and put it in this room, which is currently the art room to kind of see what's going on in here. This will become the music room now, but that means that this entire room has to be emptied out before I can start getting stuff in. So Steven, guess what your job is this morning? Ba -ba -ba -bum, emptying out all the pictures out of the music room. Oh, yeah. Okay. So while he does that, I'm going to start getting the guitar wall taken down so we can get it set up in here. Okay, now it's my turn. I've got all the guitars off of the guitar wall. I don't know if you recall the episode where I, I use all these human looking hands <laughs> to hold the guitars. I love those things. They're called the guitar grips. Um, all of this has to move into that other room. Uh, so I guess I'm going to do the same thing as Steven and start taking stuff off the walls in preparation for the shelves to go here. As the walls get emptied off, I forget just how much art I have here. I mean, I really do love art. I love design, you know, from Josh's artwork to 1800s paintings of, um, fishermen out on the sea, um, to this, which is a 1950s uh, oil on board painting of uh, some fighter jets. But um, as we get things off, I rediscover little items, little gems that I have too, like this Burns Coal. This is an original painting that would have been a, mo a mock-up done by the artist for uh, probably a, a brickwork painting that was painted on the side of the building at one point. So this was never sold to the public. It's um, what he came up with as a design for uh, this Burns Coal Company, and this dates to about 1901. Really, really neat piece of art and a uh, nice piece of advertising history too. Okay, got the lower part of the guitar wall down. Have to patch a couple spots up top there. And what are we doing in here? Steven has been a busy worker bee getting all this stuff taken down. It's echo, echoing here. Uh, and I'm starting to get the uh, other bar up that the guitar is gonna go on. Hello, Steven. Hello. He's busy emptying out the showcase, which will come out of this room. Uh, and yeah, I'll have a whole different feeling in here. I was gonna be cool. We should almost get like a little sitting chair. People can hang out in here. I don't know. It's gonna be nice. I need a touch up on the wall. Where is the paint? Here is the paint. La 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 la. A painty painty paint for you. <laughs> 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 oh, the joy of having your dad working with you. Hands are in place. Pictures are going up on the wall. Um, I think I'm going to put some shelves or maybe some other pictures over there. But for now, this is a good start. Steven, in the meantime, has been back here getting all these shelves emptied off. It's looking good, kiddo. So much stuff. I know. Sometimes you have to make a big mess in order to make it better again. But this is why we're doing this on our day off today. Day off, quote unquote. Because all of these shelves are going to be taken down and put into that room that I'm working in. And this is where we will have um, records and uh, record players and all sorts of stuff. Because it's going to be the music room. Um, so, I mean, even if you just empty off um, right to this point here, uh, I can start dismantling those shelves and get them in place. It looks like you're just about done too. Almost. Almost, yeah. So you're okay. Uh, can you reach the stuff on top? Do you need a ladder? I think I might need a ladder. Okay. I'm not, not quite that tall. The only one that's tricky is that uh, orange Allied Van Line model kit because it's pretty fragile. This one right there. So if you need help, just let me know, okay? All right. In the meantime, I'm going to start getting some guitars moved over from the front and putting them in the room here. It is time for us to go today. We're, I'm not nearly done. There's still a pretty big mess back there. Right? Well, it's not that bad. No, it's pretty bad. <laughs> but I can't do much until Josh comes and builds the shelves. But the plus side is the wall is empty. The other wall is empty. There's room for him to put the shelves up. I have to move a couple of these little things out of the way, but that's no big deal. Um, and I've started to get some work done in the music room. Let me show you what Steven and I have been up to. We have been busy working away in here. So the music room, 
We've got the uh, music posters, guitars, all set up. And I consolidated all the records into one place. I didn't realize just how many records we actually had. Enough to fill basically an entire room. My dad would be so proud. Um, <laughs> also, I have a lot of turntables too. The turntables are stacked up, ready to go. Um, there's still a little bit of room for me to put stuff on display up top there, which I'll figure out in the next day or so. And this empty showcase, which used to house a lot of um, soapstone, is going to have um, all the sort of rare and valuable music related stuff like old 50s Elvis booklets and uh, valuable albums and things like that. But I've got to get the uh, glass all cleaned up and put back in. That'll be a tomorrow project. I have a lot of tomorrow projects. But we have one room just about done. So uh, next visit will be from Josh. Oh, I guess I should probably bring the stool. We usually have a stool so people can actually sit in here and play guitar. I'll get that brought in. Uh, but yeah, next stop, Josh is coming to uh, get the shelves put up. Right there. I dropped Steven off back at home. Um, I thought it would be, <laughs> I thought it'd be nice at lunchtime when he was helping me out to uh, order food. Now, Steven likes really spicy food. So we ordered these chicken sandwiches from a place not far from us. I like it a little bit hot. He likes it like extremely hot. So we ordered one that was normal and then one that had ghost peppers and scorpion peppers and whatever else on it. Well, needless to say, when it came, they mislabeled the boxes. <laughs> um, so here I am halfway through my sandwich and he's halfway through his. And uh, he says, it's not all that spicy. In the meantime, Mine is just really starting to take hold. I have tears streaming down my face. Uh, my nose is probably running. I'm just like almost crying like, what's wrong with this sandwich? My mouth was on fire. In fact, my mouth is still numb. <laughs> Today, you know, uh, the next day, it was the spiciest sandwich I think I've had. And that kid likes spicy stuff. I almost feel like I took one for him. Like I thought, like I took a bullet for my kid. Like I should, you know, you shouldn't have been eating that. <laughs> a kid's got an iron stomach though. So dad got the spicy sandwich. My faith is still numb this morning. And I'm on my way to go meet with Josh, who is gonna be there in about uh, half an hour to help me get the uh, shelves installed. I say help me, I'm not gonna do anything. He's gonna be putting the shelves in. I have to put all the, the stuff away, the big mess away that Steven and I made yesterday um, and get that cleaned up. It's gonna be another big day. Um, and hopefully by the end of this video, I'll have it all done. I'm really not sure if I'll be able to get it done in time. I'm actually a little concerned about it. So I guess we'll see. Um, so tally ho, off we go. And uh, soon there will be a Josh knocking at my door. Oh my, I forgot just how much stuff I left all over the place. And I have to open tomorrow for business so this whole area has to be perfectly clean and organized this is gonna be quite a long day i am working away and i hear the rumble of a giant truck which can only mean one thing does it mean that one thing yes it does josh is here there is a josh monster truck here look at that and he's got shelves so how did the rest of the construction go? Good and bad. Oh, what, what, okay, what's the good part first? Okay, good part, everything is going to work, I think. Usually when I do these types of builds, I build them in place, but I made sure I measured everything. Yeah. But the problem is, is that I didn't look at my measurements for this shelf here, and I made everything too long. So last night I scrambled to shrink everything and let's just hope that I didn't screw that up too. Okay, it, was that that instruction you wrote and you're like, this won't make sense to anybody but me and it didn't make sense to you <laughs> yeah, either? exactly. Uh, okay, well, I, you got your tools and stuff with you, right? So you can make adjustments here? Yeah, if I need to. Yeah. Okay, uh, you need a hand bringing some stuff in? Yeah, sure. Okay. Josh and I have been carrying in some of the bits for the shelves. He needs to grab some tools to make a couple adjustments. I'm gonna let him continue on with his work and I'm gonna continue on with mine, getting the glass back in the showcase in the music room um and then trying to clean up a bit back here the problem is most of the stuff that's here can't go anywhere until those other shelves are in so i'm uh kind of stuck but i might be here all day it's gonna be a long one for sure how's it going up front oh you're making progress on this one yes okay well that's good it's looking like the other this is a little tricky to do by myself remember you helped me with that one to kind of yeah like line so it up so it's not like falling down and Okay. too much. So you need my help? Yeah. Okay. 
I will get my hand on the board and we'll get this knocked in. Okay. So you hold that and I'll hold this. Mm -hmm. I have to pull it up. Pull it. I think. Yeah, that's one. There we go. One down. Three to go. Sweet. I will admit, I'm starting to get a little bit nervous because while I clear things in the back here, Josh had a bit of an error and didn't measure quite correctly. Normally that's not such a big deal, but when you have to open in the next morning, um, you have to wait for the stain to dry and for things to be built. Um, I'm running out of room back here and I'm kind of chasing my own tail because I have to move these things twice now because I don't have the shelf space up front. Um, but that said, I'm going to plug away, do as much as I can, but I'm really starting to worry uh, about being able to open tomorrow when the store is still such a mess. Um, I mean, if you don't believe me, <laughs> have a look all around. There's stuff pretty much piled everywhere here. Um, I don't have as much time as I'd like today either because I'm supposed to be going over for dinner uh, and visiting with my mom today. Not that I don't love visiting my mom, I really do, but that means it's an extra bit of pressure to try and get things done quickly. All I can do now is hope that Josh can get the shelves built and in place, which it sounds like he's doing, and then I can start moving this up to the front of the shop. Josh has given me the thumbs up that I can start putting things on this shelf, kind of by our friend Zoltar there. So I'm starting to get in some typewriters and put some cameras up at the very top. Things that are unlikely to be looked at very often can go up at the top, but you can still see what they are. Um, I do want to try and come up with some sort of game plan for down here, and I want to do a mix of antiques and newer product um, on the main shelves right in this area here. It's gonna be a blend. And that's the one thing that's nice about having this type of shop. You can do things that other normal stores can't. And there's Josh. How's it going over here? Oh, we're gonna be back on track here in a second. Nice. I see you had to take the baseboard off. Yeah, but probably maybe almost, I don't know, but maybe for no reason, because I made everything, these two too short, so. We'll see, we'll see. Let's see if you can figure it out. I, I have faith. I'll figure it out. Okay, it is quitting time. It's 4.30 p.m. and the reason I'm leaving right now is because I'm supposed to be at my house for five o'clock for dinner, which is gonna be really tight if I even make it. Starting to get some product on the shelves that Josh made, so that's fantastic. Uh, the other shelves are up and they're looking good too. But the problem is um, I'm not anywhere near done when it comes to clearing out the back area. So it is gonna be an early morning for me tomorrow to get all of this stuff put away in the few hours I have before we open. So for me, that's it for tonight and I'll be back in tomorrow to hopefully get this finished up. Well, sadly, I didn't make it in time for opening to get everything done. I still have some empty shelves behind me or a little bit of space there. Um, but I did get some of the spots emptied out and ready to go. So the toy section is all set up and the back of the store, well, it's come a long way too. I can actually walk and move and all the piles of stuff are off and out of the way. So I can actually walk back here, still have all those pictures to put away. But I did get pretty far considering what a mess this was earlier today. Um, one nice thing though, is that even though I have a lot of stock that I still have to get rid of, like this big pile of stuff on the pinball machines, what I do when I have a situation like this where I have a bunch of stock, I'm just ready for it to go off to a new home and I don't have a place for it, I call up a friend or I call up another antique dealer and I wholesale it out and off it goes. So this whole pile is gonna be gone in moments and the space will look a whole lot better. In the meantime though, I went out last night and I picked up a pinball machine, which I have to get out of the back of my car. I have a space ready for it, so let's go grab that. Got the pinball machine out of the car for the most part. I don't have the back glass here yet because I need to assemble the legs. I've got two on. It is that um, you want to make sure that your legs are adjusted nice and low at the front and taller at the back so you have a faster play field. This machine is going to need some work before it's operational. Um, I'll show you what it looks like once it's all put together and done. But with the changes I made in the back, there's actually room for it, which is great because I want to focus more on arcade games and I need the space for that. Okay, I've got the legs on the machine and I look inside. The one thing you don't want to forget is to run the cable through the proper spot. You can see all these cobwebs in here. Oh, yes. Uh, it's because there's spiders. Let me grab it. Where'd it go? I saw it a second ago. There we are. 
big spider pog <laughs> game from the 90s it did not really catch on they're modeled after bottle um, milk container bottle caps i'm gonna have to get the vacuum out and clean this out before i put the head unit back on it's pretty filthy down there well there we go back glass is on i took the glass off the play field so i could clean it up with some windex there but i'm noticing something Aside from needing some new rubber on this pinball machine, somebody was a cheater. <laughs> they took a string and they made it so you couldn't go down the little gutter here. Um, I guess that would make your play extra long, but what's the fun? The whole fun is uh, trying to get the top score legit. Uh, well, that's got to go. But overall, the play field's not terrible. A lot of times you see a lot of wear down the alley. Like, see, there's some wear right there. Um, where it's been hitting the advance, but um, not too bad. And the back glass is intact. Um, I'll have to have uh, my buddy Pinball Jim come and check on it and make sure it's okay. But I'm starting to get the nice little alley of pinball machines. And all the stuff that was piled up on top here is gone now. My friend uh, came and picked it up. It'll be for sale at an antique mall near me. Um, but I'm going to get this uh, vacuumed up, cleaned up, and then uh, close her up. I took a minute to stop putting things up on the walls. Uh, because I had a, a gentleman come in today that actually found a whole bunch of vintage photographs in the garbage. There are people who go binning for a living. Uh, Adam, who used to come through the shop, he went binning and found stuff and sold to us. This gentleman is in a similar situation. Um, he brought in these photos. And what are they? Well, they're from 1939, as you can see. This is the royal visit. So uh, the funny thing is here, you know, as you look through and you see the parade and all the, the hoopla that was going on there. Uh, what a big ordeal it was. Well, that flash in the pan photo of that car going by, that's the Royal Tour car. And if you look back on my YouTube series, you're going to see an episode where I actually got the Royal Tour car and we got it donated to a museum. So my butt has been in that seat uh, and in the back too, actually. Um, and uh, I was able to uh, drive this car around. It's a big 39 McLaughlin Buick limousine. What a, what a cool thing to find, you know, full circle, a picture of a car that I drove all those years later. Um, so that was a neat book. This one kind of makes me sad because uh, there's pictures of Niagara Falls. And, you know, um, I did an episode where I visited Niagara Falls. And truth be told, I was disappointed because the falls themselves are beautiful. And you look at the buildings and the architecture that they had in the 30s. Very picturesque, you know, kind of keeping with a uh, nice tradition. What they've done with Niagara Falls now is basically like a really cheap casino. It's like if if Las Vegas didn't have any money to do Las Vegas, they, in my mind, I hate to say it, Niagara Falls, don't get mad at me. You've ruined your town because you made it tacky. <laughs> you used to be this beautiful place, picturesque and scenic and park-like, which is what, in my mind, it should be. And you made it, you know, have a bunch of Ripley's Believe It or Not museums and stuff. Um, I'll probably get heat for that, but I don't care. That's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. Um... There's pictures of the construction of the Fort Peck Dam in Montana in 1939, of it going up. So I'm, I'm guessing whoever had these pictures was somewhat involved in the uh, construction of it. And um, perhaps this photo is of some of the crew that worked on the dam. You know, they don't, boy, some of these guys do not look happy to be getting their picture taken. I can't tell with the guy with the mustache there. His mustache is so big, it covers his, anything that would let you know how he's thinking or feeling. Um, the other thing that was neat that came through was there was a whole uh, bunch of pictures that came from the uh, New York World's Fair in 1939. And look at the pavilions, the buildings that they did. General Electric had this giant lightning bolt. Uh, Westinghouse had this kind of cool antenna looking thing. Every building was, was somewhat unique and interesting. Um, even Canada had an exhibit at the World's Fair. And uh, there was a picture of that in here too. Look, there's Lucky Strike Cigarettes had their own pavilion my how times have changed uh but i was going through these world's fair photos and thinking just how cool they were uh when i stumbled across this one too which is uh they you know i was gonna say they trucked it down it probably went there on its own but they took down the uh canadian pacific royal locomotive and that was the year of the royal tour they had that on display and that is the train that actually carried that Royal Tour car all across Canada and down to the United States. And so there it is, July 1936, the Royal Train on display, an original picture of the Royal Train. And of course, you've got these other cool, you know, like bullet trains and pavilion buildings. Um, just so cool to see the architecture. There was one that I'm going to try and find that was so neat. Oh, look at this. The Frozen Forest in the Chrysler Building, New York. So in 1939, they built this 
sort of dealership looking uh, setup in the Chrysler building on the main floor in the atrium area. And they, they made all these frozen looking palm trees. Isn't that neat? And if you're in the Chrysler building today, you probably didn't know that the lobby looked like that at one time as you're walking through there. Uh, just, you know, these are all little snapshots, a little bit of history that could have so very easily been lost along the way. But uh, here they are preserved on my counter. Now I have to find a new home for them. But that's the joy of this business. And as I'm going through the pictures, I see rock and roll Paul. He gets the rock and roll camera tilt. I just made everybody queasy at home. <laughs> uh, Paul was here last night or yesterday when Josh and I were putting shelves up. I was asked to leave. <laughs> yeah. No, I wasn't. You're looking like Bane with your mask on today. Oh, no, really? <laughs> Bane. <laughs> la, la, la. Bane. Bane, yeah. Bane. I don't... That, that's because I'm in great shape, right? That's that right. That wasn't a crack about, about my complexion or anything. Well, that and you Kool-Aid man your way through my store today. This is true. I just smashed through the Rock wall. Rock and roll Paul answers to nobody. <laughs> oh. I'm Batman. Uh, but... I'm just here for the chocolate. That's oh. really why I visit as often as I do, because of these chocolates. That's right. You're all about these truffles. I'm all about those truffles. They're so tasty. See, you know what? And then people say, when I get new products in, and I do get different sorts of things, they say, well, why don't you just sell antiques? Well, there's more to life than just selling one product category, and that's exactly. what we've been doing. Antiques, newer things, truffles, uh, funny little coffee mugs, and we sell a variety of stuff every day. But I got to show you what we did with the shop. Because uh, you saw only yeah, a part of it. I didn't really get a good look. I just sort of was in the doorway and I let you let you do your thing because you were okay. You were busy. Well, follow me. Uh, okay. First off, shelves are in place. I'm probably going to put another little lamp like I have up here. These gooseneck lamps. Incidentally, if you're watching and you have an antique gooseneck lamp, I could always use more. Um, I use them on my shelves. So we have a shelf in place. This is not going to live like this forever. I'm waiting on some product to show up, but. You know, we got some space for typewriters and some products down below. We continue on. This is what I wanted to do. The kids like to kind of stay in the front of a store. Uh, it's easy to keep your eye on the parents. Uh, so we set up this whole little kids wall. This used to be where my guitars were. And we have like mountains of toy cars for them to search through. We've got puppets and fun stuff. Uh, my Coke machine has sold. I'm just waiting for somebody to come pick it up. So as busy as this all looks, this is now the, uh, the, kid, the kid zone. In the and corner at one here. point, this is going to be a throughway when you open up the newer. Well, newer that's place. just it. Yeah. When these doors open, that will go into the next space. That's why there's not a whole lot here because um, this will get moved out of the way and we'll go through. So uh, those doors will open up into the next building. Uh, so yeah, it'll have much different architecture. But you have to come check out the uh, piano room. Or not, not piano room. The the music room. Oh, sweet. So this is where if you're into music. You can come and check it out. Well, then that's easy, easy, nice, nice way that you can sort through records and everything else. Yeah. yeah so I did alphabetize all the ones in the bins. And then uh, I got through, Stephen and I spent a good amount of time, go, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, and so forth. You know, like the alphabet. <laughs> and then um, he's like, Dad, what about these? And I'm like, oh, no. So apparently I've been buying more records than uh, maybe I should have. So there's a whole lot more that need to be alphabetized, but that's for another day. You know somebody's going to want. So the more selection you have, the better chance you have of selling something. Right? True. Um, and then you can see these these great classic rock posters here, the seals and crofts and the doors. Yeah, I, remember, I got that right and off the lady that yeah, went to the concert. They're signed, yeah, that's great. Well, these are signed yeah. by Bob Mass. Yeah. So the Very seals cool. and crofts is of the era. It's from probably the early 70s. England, Dan, and John Forkoe. <laughs> John, wow. Yeah. So uh, Josh's painting went back up. Um, the idea with the lower part of the showcase is all my higher end records, like the fancy, some because some records can be worth a lot of money. Um, the more expensive records I have, I do have some. I just don't have them out yet. Those are all going to go late in the bottom there. And um, I figured, hey, if you like rock and roll, you probably like automotive stuff too. So I <laughs> don't ask why. <laughs> uh, I needed somewhere to put some oil cans in that. So that, that's where that went. But now there's a space where people can come and just sit down and play a guitar. And I don't have to listen to Stairway to Heaven out in the front of the shop. Uh, they can come in here secluded in their own little room and do that. Is that a silver tone amp? It's a tube amp. Nice. It's a silver tone tube amp from the 50s. Lots of old timey blues guys started out with silver tone, silver tone acoustic guitars. Better sight lines. What's happening back here is that I, I had shelves all the way around. And I have now made sort of a little library area for books, you know, like people put in a library. I have pop art. When I say like modern or pop art, I mean uh, Ron Moppet, uh, Picasso, 
that's Don Quixote. Um, you know, this is all sort of a little bit uh, more on the, the modern side. And then as you continue past the library, you get into um, this Georgian desk which I picked up not that long ago. I, I had it unceremoniously on display before, but now it has a little ship on it. It's much happier in its new home. And then I have some uh, landscapes, um, some less graphs that actually came out of Mary's place, um, Heinz Fotisch, and some more, um, you know, Victorian and newer artwork too, like the David Bates and so forth. Uh, so it kind of sets the mood back here. Uh, of course, there's another antique desk from the 1800s. This is a banker's desk. It's marked as such on the back, you know, mid 1800s. Uh, makes a nice little spot to display my slot machines. And uh, the nice thing is I can get all of my arcade stuff kind of in a row. So, so I'm not quite done over here. As you can see, I was putting a pinball machine together earlier. I was cleaning the glass and then the door, people kept coming, you know, like customers came in like they often do. Uh, so I've got to put that back together and see if we can get it working. Stingray. You could be a real whiz if you just left the glass off and you just reached and touched the things you wanted. You know, it's funny you say that because I was joking earlier. Somebody had tied a string across so it couldn't go down. <laughs> they tied strings across. I was like, they were cheating. Um, cheating. Cheating game. They were cheating on it. But now the nice thing is this backspace here is still comfortable, still open. Um, and I got rid of the shelves that were up here. So it's much more... Um, I don't know, there's better sight lines and more open. It's just a nicer feeling space, I think. Yeah, it's not as closed in. No, so, um, and then I had, you know, room for it's my... a lot more bearable. Ha! Uh, <laughs> poor old bear. You know, the things <laughs> I end up with. The one problem is I still have all these pictures here and I don't have room for them, but um, I will figure that out. That'll be a problem for future me tomorrow. <laughs> hang them from the ceiling. Oh boy, you know, trust me, I've thought about that before too. But uh, yeah, I think I have some space, some wall space in my little hallway by the washroom that's not being utilized to its best. So I'm just going to try and find room there. But all in all, uh, it came together and I was able to get uh, all of my soapstones and Inuit statues all together and in their own little showcase back here. So let me open that up. Oh, I actually sold one today. So my display is working already. Uh, I had this beautiful piece that was right in the center here, which sold. So I'll bring those up. Rearrange my soapstones like the friendly giant would rearrange furniture and get those back in place. But these go back to the 1950s and 60s. Um, I said before, the smaller uh, the piece, the more authentic it is. The bigger pieces were definitely made as art. Uh, smaller pieces were made um, for themselves. And uh, none of these would have been, you know, um, from the 1800s before. I do have some that are that old, but they're not in this case. So just kind of a nice little selection. Duke boxes are, I put the guts all more or less back together. Um, I have to move a couple things here and there, but you know, it's just about done. Thank goodness, because what a lot of work that was. Well, that is it. Another day, another busy episode. We finally got our shelves in place. Everything worked out perfect. I've got plenty of room for new product, plenty of room for antiques down below, and everything is departmentalized exactly where I want it. So with a big thanks to Josh for helping me to get this all together, the back of the store is now nice and clean and looking great. Uh, so thanks for watching today's episode, guys. I have another pick I'm going on tomorrow so it might be another video coming soon either way stay tuned there's always something happening around here uh, we'll see you next time bye for now